What the f All right, so we are at my storage location where I keep all my nicer cars. And this being probably the least nice of all of them, but it's a convertible. I like to keep it out of the elements. Uh, the cats in my neighborhood at back at my house like to claw at the top. So I've been keeping it in here. But what happened was back in like, God, this was a while ago, maybe September. I was driving this, I had been driving it for a while, I wasn't having any issues with it. When I bought this, I don't think I ever did a second video. I bought this over a year ago. The only issue it had was a coolant leak, and it's a plastic kind of elbow system down here. Well, those crack on these Cavaliers due to heat, and they start hemorrhaging coolant. That was the issue with this. Fortunately, it was not the water pump. So I changed out that plastic elbow, and the car was doing great. The other thing I did with this Cavalier, and again, I'm not sure if I filmed any of this, uh, if there was ever a second video I did in this car, I don't recall, but I changed the fuel filter. It's very common for Cavaliers of this era to have fuel pump issues, and this car had sat for at least two years, maybe longer, uh, with old gas in it. So I changed the fuel filter right after I bought it. I was driving this months ago, I think, like I said, September, October, here we are in uh, January of the new year, 2022. And this thing just started to, uh, you know, it was bucking as if it wasn't getting fuel. And uh, by some miracle, I got it up into the garage here. And just as I came around that bend, it stalled out and I rolled into the spot and uh, life got in the way. I never touched it again. So I've got a battery with me. I'm going to put some power to this thing and then I'm gonna try to get it back to my house. I got another fuel filter. My guess is that more some crap that was in the fuel tank clogged up the new filter and uh, wasn't getting the proper amount of fuel. So either that or maybe the pump is starting to go out. Hopefully not, but I'm gonna take this thing home, put a fuel filter in it. It needs an oil change. Uh, I don't think I ever did one when I bought it and it was uh, here, I'll tell you now. Nope, definitely not. It was never like bad, bad oil, but it's just, it's old. You know, I know this car sat for years and I never changed it. So do an oil change on her fuel filter. Hopefully she'll be back on the road after that. So let me go ahead and get this battery in and let's see what happens. I've got my forerunner hooked up with cables, this battery. I didn't really have time to give it a full, full, full charge. It was like 12 volts, but 60% charge. So just in case now the forerunner, I haven't done any other videos on it since I did a couple of improvements like the headlights. Uh, it's been doing great. I drive this thing a lot. It's one of my daily drivers. So uh, nothing really to update. Took it off-roading the other day. It is a two-wheel drive, but we don't have any inclines here in Florida. So going down some dirt roads in the Everglades is no problem with those nice chunky tires it has. All right, so like I said, this hasn't ran in several months. See what happens here. I, I vaguely even remember. All I remember is it. I think it stalled out as I pulled in here, and I never tried to run it again. Oop, almost. Okay, she's running. Fortunately, that battery did sound pretty good. I mean, it's got the Forerunner connected to it, but first things first. Let's get the convertible top down. It's a little musty in here. It's been sitting. The window's down. Very easy top to operate. Press this button, pull this down, and back. One of the reasons I love this car so much, super easy top. You can, even if you run in the store for a few minutes, it's no big deal, just throw it back up. That tapping you hear is just the injectors. These 2.4s all sound like that. Uh, it actually seems like it's running fairly well. So uh, let's take advantage of that while it still is and get this thing back to my house. 
Well, look at that. All that time parked there. It didn't leak a drop of anything. I'm impressed. It's got some weepage. It's a hundred seven thousand mile car, but you can you see just how long I've had it sitting? A layer of filth on the uh, windshield. I just want to check the tires. I thought they sounded a little bit flat. I'm sure they're low, but just enough to get us to my house a few minutes away. That one looks pretty good. I mean, they're low, but yeah, you can see. <laughs> All right. It's always had the ABS and airbag light, the ETS light. So nothing new there. Got my code reader just in case uh, she starts acting up and throws a code. That would be the uh, hope. But I think truly what happened last time was uh, was a fuel issue with that filter. So as soon as I get her home, swap that out and we should be uh, good to go. Okay, well, I haven't gotten very far here, uh, not even a mile. And it's already starting to uh, stutter. That's not good. Um, I uh, need to get off the main roads here. God forbid it does die again. I will be able to uh, safely get out of the way. Let's just uh, see here. I almost had a chance to cross there and I lost it. But I've got my foot pretty in the throttle. You can see she's not going. Come on, mama. So I chose a Sunday to do this because there'll be the least amount of traffic. Okay, at least now I'm uh, on a less busy street. So yeah, the problem is still persisting. Uh, come on, ooh. I, I'm not manipulating any of this. This is a day in the life of a hoopty collector. You know, I'm always dealing with <laughs> little dumb stuff like this. Uh, these cars overall, these cars that I collect, they're very reliable. Um, this stuff happens from lack of use. I mean, again, this car, and not even my fault, the previous owner had it parked for years and you know, just all that bad gas I'm fighting through in this thing. I can't remember if I've gone through a tank full in this yet or what, but I'm sure there's still junk at the bottom of the tank. Or again, it could be that notorious uh, Cavalier fuel pump on its way out. Um, okay, let me focus on the road, but so far, not a very good start. Okay, just a little update. I limped it another mile or so. She's really not doing well now. I, this is as fast as I can go. She is just bucking along. This, if there was ever a uh, good piece of marketing for a AAA membership, this is it. I, I used to have AAA and I always forget to get it again. And today's one of those days where I sure wish I had it <laughs> because I wouldn't be sweating as bad as I am right now. And of course this person is not paying attention when I'm trying to make this light. I, I, I gotta make a decision here. I think I need to go a little bit safer because if I get stuck at that intersection, I'm blocking traffic, it's not a good look. So now I'm going a little bit out of my way, unfortunately, but I'd rather come out of a less busy, you can see how busy that intersection is. I'd rather, uh, by the way, this is my dog, Coochie, for uh, those of you who don't know him, I've had him for Quite a long time now, but he hasn't been on the channel in quite some time. So it's a nice day. I figured I'd have him out in the convertible. One of those cars don't really care about the seats, they're covered. So yeah, I uh now it's gonna take me even longer to get home. But I'd rather if this thing's gonna die, I'd rather it do it on a little sleepy street like this than in the middle of a major road. Uh <laughs> that's the worst. So let's hope for the best. All right, so thankfully, I now I'm on my street. So at this point, if she dies right here, I don't really care. But I made it home. Uh, the rest of the drive was fairly uneventful. It was still bucking and cutting, but uh, not nearly as bad as those couple of times. So um, what I'm going to do now is get into my driveway. I'm going to go try to find my uh, fuel pressure gauge. I can hook up to the rail and see what kind of pressure we're getting. And... Uh, We'll go from there. It, it definitely feels like that's what it is. 
Okay, so I dug around for, for quite a while looking for my uh, fuel pressure gauge to put on the Schrader valve. I assumed it exists on this fuel rail, but I don't see one. I'm going to start by changing the fuel filter, start her up. If she runs great, drives around the block, no problem. Uh, we'll leave it at that. If the problem persists, I'm going to pull out the fuel rail and I'm going to bench clean the injectors, throw it back in. And uh, at that point, uh, we've pretty much eliminated everything except for the fuel pump. The fuel pump is failing. If, that, if I've done those two things and it still isn't running right and it hasn't thrown a code for anything at that point, I know it's got to be the pump. It's on its way out and I'll have to change it. But looking around the engine bay, I don't see anything out of place, out of line. There's nothing disconnected or loose like a vacuum line or something. Everything looks good. So I don't think that's our issue. All right, so I've broken free the uh, line going from the filter to the fuel rail. And uh, the fuel looks clear, but it smells like old gas. So I'm guessing, again, uh, probably most of the contaminants are in this filter. It's clogged up, but we're seeing clear from what has gotten through. But Definitely doesn't smell like new gas, smells like old gas. So that's kind of reassuring that that may be what our issue is. This filter is just clogged up with sediment and other stuff from the tank. So uh, now I gotta get this guy off. Let me get that out and we'll pop the new filter in. I think this is the same one. Sure looks like it. And uh, we'll see what happens. Filter is in. Just checking for leaks. It's been a few minutes. I think it's safe to say it's not gonna leak. Let me clear a few things off the trunk here and uh, we'll take her for a spin. All right, interesting. I gotta check engine light before I even moved from changing the fuel filter. We're over here. Got an IAC, idle air control, system RPM higher than expected. That might've been me revving this thing a little bit, trying to get it to stay running. That's a stored code actually. Uh, when was that? Temperature was 176, so that was probably just a minute ago. And then we have a uh, pending code, same deal. Uh, let me clear that now that I know what it is, see if it comes back. I think that was just related to this thing having kind of a rough start while I was trying to suck up fuel through the new dry filter. But uh, let's, uh, let's go here. Oh, psh already a bad start already but let me let me give it a drive because again it's got a you know let's make sure it's getting the fuel through that filter you know it was a bone dry out of the box filter so i'll take it around the block here but i think that was not our fix interesting watch this so it seemed like it was much better i said okay great you know probably was a filter that was a bit clogged up but watch what happens if i floor it My foot's on the floor. Foot's on the floor. She is just, <laughs> oh, now it's really bad, like it was before. So that's interesting. Uh, I don't know, again, that could be the fuel just cutting out, but I don't know, now, now I'm wondering if it's something else. So initially I was thinking injectors if this problem persisted, but the one thing that's strange is it idles perfectly. And then once you get going, it starts hiccuping and having all these issues. So the fuel filter, when I changed it out, while the fuel had a little bit of an odor to it, it was very clear everything that came out of that filter, and I mean everything. So. Uh, I'm starting to wonder if maybe we have some sort of air intake issue. Um, we did have that idle air control valve code, but it said the RPM was too high. It's not idling high, it's idling right where it should. And like I said, it's idling smooth as silk. So I'm gonna just start tearing off all the air box components here, see if anything looks out of the ordinary. I'm also gonna take a look at the idle air control valve. And then if all that passes, uh, at that point, I'll just pull the rail and clean the injectors. But again, I'm starting to think maybe it's not a fuel issue, um, being that it idles so well and it's so random. When I took all this apart, didn't really find anything too alarming. Uh, you know, the throttle body is a little bit dirty. I wiped it um, with a dry napkin because I was out of uh, 
throttle body cleaner. I just went out and bought some. And the um, idle air control valve. Again, it was a little bit dirty, but nothing that would make me think it would not function properly, but I cleaned it anyway. Um, and then the air filter. Honestly, it was probably the dirtiest thing I found. And again, it's not that bad, but it needs to be replaced. So I got another one. So it's a Sunday night. I'm tired. I think for now, I'm going to throw this all back together after cleaning those things. See if we see any improvement, but I don't think we will. I think uh, the next step is to pull the fuel rail and uh, clean those injectors. But it's not going to be today. I'm tired. I've got her all buttoned back up, mass airflow cleaned, idle air control valve cleaned, or maybe it's a map sensor on this, whatever it is, I cleaned it. Uh, throttle body cleaned, this air filter changed. This thing is not gonna be happy when I start it up, let me tell you, because uh, <laughs> all, that, all that cleaning solvent that went into the throttle body, cleaning the mass airflow, all that stuff, it's gonna send the car haywire. She actually started right up pretty nicely. All right, so check it out. Couldn't do this before. Remember before I tried doing that and it would just uh, basically fall on its face. So something I did obviously improve something. And so far, I haven't had the issue we were having with the uh, stalling and cutting out was what it felt like. Uh, now, I think the idle's just trying to relearn after I had the battery disconnected and the idle air control valve out, and I cleaned the mass air float, I cleaned the throttle body. I threw a lot at this thing at once, so you might have just noticed a second ago when I slowed down from that acceleration at the... RPMs are bouncing around, but aside from that, it's running perfect. So, could have just been idle air control valve was dirty. Doesn't really make sense. Usually, when you've got a problem with idle air control valve, your idle's too high, as the code said, which it wasn't. Uh, could have just been that it needed, uh, you know, an air filter and a throttle body cleaning and, you know, the basics. But I'm going to drive it around a, a good bit more tonight and really make sure that that was the solution before I put it back over in the garage. Because um, if it wasn't, like I said, I'm going to pull the rail, bench clean the injectors. I lean toward it not being the injectors because the car is running way too well right now. I, I don't see how the injectors could be working this perfectly. Then all of a sudden get stuck open or something or be so clogged up all of a sudden and not clogged up. I got to have one of those things. I got to keep driving it and... Uh, Hope that I fix the problem for once, hopefully easily. Okay, so just a little update. I got that same idle air control valve code again. It came back. Remember, I cleared it earlier. So it, let me see. This was, yeah, this had to be PO507. So it says the idle is higher than expected. The idle is obviously not higher than expected, but. It could just be the malfunctioning of that IAC that was causing this thing to go haywire earlier. So I'm gonna clear the code again. I'm gonna drive it some more. And if that issue comes back with the um, with the vehicle feeling like it's gonna cut out, then I'm gonna order an IAC, like 18 bucks. And um, the car is trying to tell me something because it keeps throwing that code before I cleaned it, after I cleaned it. So um, it certainly could be that. Well, you're not going to be able to hear me well. I'm topped out on the highway, but I think it's safe to assume that this is fixed. Um, I mean, I'm on the highway and I'm having no issues of power. I just put the throttle down. She goes. So uh, I think I fixed it. I think it just needed the uh, idle air control valve cleaned and it needed the... Uh, Throttle body cleaned, you need a new air filter, you just needed a going through. Or it could have been none of that, it could have just been the fuel filter and it took it running for a few minutes to get rid of whatever clog it had in the lines. So whatever I did, it fixed it. Because I keep getting that idle air control valve code, I'm going to go ahead and order one tomorrow. They're super cheap and just change it so I don't have to ever worry. Because uh, I've gotten that code like three more times. It keeps coming back. But the car is running fine. So um, 
I'm just giving her a real good shakedown tonight. I'm gonna take it for a real long drive, highway, city, everything in between, and just make sure the problem doesn't come back. Just reporting back in. Got the top up now, I got a little chilly. Uh, it's doing fantastic. I think uh, a combination of all the little minor repairs and tuning up I did today uh, fixed the problem because I've been on the highway doing 75, 80. I can get into the throttle, no issue. I've been around town, start, stop. She is back to, uh, I think, better than ever, to be honest. Was running well before I started having the stalling, but not this well. It feels like a whole different car. She's got all her power back. And let me tell you, these 2.4 liter kind of later quad four engines, while maybe not as powerful as the original quad four, they're pretty peppy. So I think uh, we'll call it finito on this one. <laughs> one of many cars in my collection I need a little TLC. It's always nice when it ends up being something easy. You never plan for it to be, but when it is, it's a great feeling. So this is my first time ever underneath this Cavalier. Well, I took a peek a second ago, but uh, I bought this car, never did any maintenance to it, really. I'm trying to think when I, I just changed the fuel filter, so I guess it was underneath the back, but never underneath the front. I knew she was a leaker. The valve cover's leaking pretty bad. It looks like probably the oil pan too, or who knows, because it's so much soot coming from the top. It could be that the oil pan's not leaking. This could all be residual from the valve cover, but uh, she's a leaker. I knew that, but remember, I paid 600 bucks for this thing, so... Uh, the fact that it runs and drives as well as it does and that the repairs were so minor, not a big deal. That boot's a bit wet. Uh, all minor stuff that I'm seeing so far. It's got a nice Purolator filter on it too, which is good to see, not a Fram or something. It's actually probably a better filter than the Delco I'm gonna put on it, but uh, definitely needs this oil change. I don't know how many years it's been, but at least it brings me some comfort knowing it had a good oil filter, so. Let me get that drain plug out, and I'll show you guys how the oil looks. All right, hopefully you guys can see. Not that this is anything extraordinarily interesting, but you never know what's going to come out of the oil pan. So let's uh, break her loose. Oh. There we go. Wish I had my... Can't find my vinyl gloves, so i got to be careful about... On this drain plug and don't get soaked in oil, especially these porous fabric type gloves. One, two, three. Nice. Well, it just looks like dirty oil. Let me grab the camera here. Definitely dirty oil but it's the right color for dirty oil. It's brown, it's not black. It's not like it's extremely dirty and uh, so far I don't see any other colors I wouldn't want to see or shavings or chunks of anything coming out. And uh, I have to imagine since the majority of the flow has already come out, so there's no sparkle to the oil. Again, I really wasn't expecting anything like that. The engine runs well. Uh, this one is uh, looking good. So I'm gonna let that drain out the rest of the way, pull the filter. Wrap up the soil change before it gets dark. All right, so the Cavalier is back in the garage, but on a good note. Um, I forgot to film when I finished up the oil change, but nothing irregular. Oil looked good. A little bit of shavings on the um, on the magnet on the drain plug, but nothing out of the ordinary for a 20-year-old vehicle with 130k. But uh, so fresh oil's in her, she's still running great. I think uh, just that basic tuning up I did sorted it out. And uh, I am gonna order that um, idle air control valve just because I kept throwing a code for it. They're super cheap and I'd rather not have that issue in the future if that's what was causing the stalling. I think it was mainly the fuel filter that it clogged up again, um, but we'll never really know until maybe if something does happen again, hopefully not. But. I drove the heck out of it last night. I just drove it here. I drove it hard. I didn't have any issues. So I think we can say that this one for now is good. Now, on to the rest of them. So thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for the next one.